Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy, Awam Kenneth, and we are back for another word. If this is your first time here, I would implore you to hit the subscribe button, you know, so that you get an alert. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so that you properly get a reminder, you know, a reminder I lot that I have posted a video and you don't get to miss out on any new thing like this one. So for today's video, I think everybody is trying to get into the, will I say, the daily grind of YouTube. Especially if you're a Nigerian um, influencer or YouTuber or content creator or digital monetization expert. You know, there are a lot of words that classify what everybody does. You know, tons of liberal. Anyway, free, free life. So now is a very important moment for a lot of Nigerian youths and it's also equally a hard time for content creators because it's like you know the content you want to create is specific to an audience and not all issues that come about in everyday life um, will be best suited for your channel so imagine if you are a wedding content creator and you just have to post pictures or videos concerning weddings and marriages you know it doesn't make sense to put something else apart from that what is actually happening in the country is there's a movement against police brutality hashtag NSAS. I did a video about this addressing um, this issue on my channel here and it's a hard time because it's like people are suffering people are dying um, the government has said they will do an investigation which um, we do not likely um, see any positivity coming from that investigation okay let me just state a fact I like most people don't see hope for any of those investigations, people are actually requesting for an end to SARS, which has been ended like quite a few times now. And what um, the government ended up doing is just basically rebrand a white labeling on the next department with the same group of people, right? So the hope for change is just basically wish at this point and come into another discussion whereby the government gave a speech the president himself gave a speech that wasn't well received by a lot of people and it felt threatening at the end of the day um, doesn't really portray a good um, light for people to say okay we have hope or clarity on what next to expect so a lot of people are just left in instead sort of a loop concerning what to do next and some people that fall into this loop are also content creators and you know when you talk about this focusing on content creators it's kind of like a disservice to people who have lost life properties loved ones in this battle and it's like okay do i just go on like do i just go on on my normal day do i just like for me now what will i do next like what's my next content do i just go on reacting to videos you know so it looks a little bit awkward and quite frankly unfair that you get to move on with your own life you get to just go on and do your content what have you and a lot of people are still like suffering and justice hasn't been served to a lot of people right so it's that critical information um critical moments it's that critical moment where you have to decide what do you do next so i think um for me i'm coming to the understanding that it's fine to continue what you were doing before right you know it's a business gt bank is still working you know but also have that consciousness that a lot of um justice hasn't been served and try not to forget as you carry as you go on your day-to-day -day, um journey right because it's really really important that we do not forget we keep the fire burning. We must try to keep each and every one of us accountable to everything that we do. You know, call out your friends, call out your um, family members, call out your politicians, call out your government. Make sure they are accountable. If they're not accountable, try to make them accountable. And I think that is the way we can move forward, especially as content creators. Um, still do your video you can still live at the end of it um put hashtags um put disclaimers put footnotes i mean they might be small but you're also also um very helpful at the end of the day because as i say a journey of a thousand miles begins with 
um, the first step. So for this video, apart from like trying to address or just trying to look in ways that content creators can move forward, I also want to talk about the aspect of being accountable and why I want to hit on this, top, um, this subject is due to the fact that people are discovering things in this country and people are basically discovering food you know palliatives it's a very horrible word palliatives but nonetheless it's been called palliatives here in the country so palliatives are like food items and items in general that are being given to people who are surviving covid19 i know i talk about it like an apocalypse but it's not survival of flood and what have you that covid was meant to disperse some palliatives to a couple of nigerians not the whole of nigerians because i doubt if that would have gone round but it was meant to share to be shared to nigerians right and over a while we didn't see anything we didn't hear anything nothing went on and people were like okay we forgot about it only for people to start discovering these palliatives like how mango park discovered the river niger and it's just so weird that people could amass this food stuff, keep it in the warehouse and just lock it up. Now the government came up with a counter saying that they only just received these palliatives and they were basically going to start sharing these palliatives after, um, after the protest would have like subdued or something. But keep in mind that this protest was not going in a particular state, it wasn't affecting the entire local government in that particular state. So the sharing of these policies would have continued, right? And then again, the protest wasn't actually disrupting social and just say logistics in general. So then again, the yeah, I say to you again, the sharing of these policies would have gone on. Another question to ask is, the great people at Kakovit haven't released any statement concerning the discovery slash looting of the palliatives and it's just basically like, what are we doing here? You know, we're getting this feedback from the government and the parastatals and the people who actually donated money, you know, for the betterment of Nigeria. In my opinion, or my point of view and in my own understanding, I haven't necessarily released any statements to address the fact that um, these palliatives have been discovered or have been looted, right? And it's just a little bit off. I know maybe they're taking the time to like properly investigate and uh, before releasing any statements, but then again, it's just weird, right? And keep in mind that COVID-19 started since way back March when monies were donated and materials could have been done. A lot of people have done their own mini um, disbursement of items to people as far back as May, June, July, right? So why is it taking till October for palliatives to be released, when they're waiting for December, I'm just, this is just me giving an excuse to them. They can just clearly say they're waiting for December to come. But then again, people have been dying way back May, March, when these palliatives would have been very, very effective. So why wait till the end of the year to disburse them? That is just one controversy, you know? So why wait this long? to disburse these palliatives or send them to the government. What happened? If there's a reason for it, it needs to be cleared. And then again, why wasn't the um, public kept in loop, step-by-step um, st -step process of what was happening? Okay, they donated this amount of money. Um, we went to meet these contractors to help us get these palliatives. We've gotten them, we've put them in this warehouse. We have given them to this government, you know, step-by-step -step process, make it more transparent. Even if they did that, it's clear that a lot of people were not kept in loop with the situation that happened with the COVID palliatives. And keep in mind that there have been rumors suggesting that people have been selling these COVID palliatives a while back before the, the protest commenced. So there is another argument there to be made. And it's just making it all look like a joke what is going on in this country with corruption and what have you. So it makes a lot of people boil, like their, bo their blood literally boil. And it's like, hey, you know something, you went to school, you could read, you could write, right? 
you have the capacity to attain logical reasoning, right? And then again, the processes, the people who you look up to, the people who are meant to guide, provide laws, put in policies, make sure the environment, the community is thriving, and then telling you something that it doesn't logically make sense. And you're like, okay, am I sleeping? Am I dreaming? What is happening here? At it just creates a mess, a total breakdown in the flow of communication, basically. And leading back to content creators, this is the problem with, okay, do I just go on creating content as, as I would do every other day? To me, I would say yes, because you can definitely solve all the whole problem, but you could help. So... Go back to creating your content, go back to doing what you're doing, but still do not forget, try in any little way you can to always remind people of these injustices and also to keep people accountable. I think that is just the broader message here um, as we'll basically gradually return to normal day life, which is really, really unfair to a lot of people who haven't yet received justice. And we hope one day they will. Without further ado, <laughs> see my next one and it's hopefully a reaction video. So remember to stay safe, guys. Yeah. Peace.